Wow, almost 13,000 subscribers. Thank you to everyone that subscribed to the channel, and I hope the channel continues to grow. What you're looking at here in this clip is the 4020 going down the road at a whopping 23.3 miles per hour. It's the fastest of 20 series tractors I've ever had. We've had several 20 series tractors in the past. Never won this fast, and that 4020's been getting quite the workout lately, uh, loading hay and doing other jobs around the farm. We like loading hay with it because it's a very nimble to use tractor. The 158 loader is quite powerful. The power shift's handy for shuttle shift type activities. Open station, you can talk to people on the ground or around you. Uh, it's just a very quick and easy to use tractor around a uh, tight space environment such as loading hay in the driveway, which is what you're seeing right here. I hope everybody's having a great Memorial Day weekend. It's one of my favorite times of the year, although this year we're getting excessive amounts of rain and everything's kind of cool and very, very wet. Uh, Memorial Day weekend is my favorite time of the year. It's to kick off the summer. It is a warm, nice time of year, and usually you're so busy you never even get to enjoy it, but I try to take a moment and enjoy the time and remember what the what the day stands for. But this time of year, you're usually finishing up some soybeans or spraying corn or cutting hay or doing all three on the same day and not knowing which direction to go first. Getting truckers for the 2020 year has been a bit of a challenge, but we were able to pick up some good guys to deliver this hay. I think our own truck is in the works in the future just to simplify things, eliminate some costs, and guarantee that we can actually get the product to market on time. The trailers that I was loading here in this video are 53 foot step decks. The 53 foot step deck with the 3x4 by about an 8 foot long bale, we can usually get 36 bales on a load. He's around 77 to 81,000 pounds on one load, which was a bit heavy, but I think with the spread, he might be able to go like 84,000, but don't quote me on that. He might not be able to actually go over 80,000. I'm not quite sure on the DOT laws of spread axles. And the SPR regular subscriber, we did have a Red 386 Peterbilt, which you probably saw in previous videos, but we did not have a hopper for it or a step deck, anything for agricultural use. The only thing we did agriculture with it was haul lime with our end home trailer. The guys we got to haul had some really nice looking 359 Peterbilt trucks, a maroon one and a black one they were bringing out on these 53 foot step decks. Uh, we we're getting 36 bales on the trailer, which again is very close to the legal load. Fits on there great, ships great. Very happy with the way that the uh, large squares ship out. And there's that 380 uh, or 359 Peterbilt. 1985, I believe the maroon one was, and that black one you just saw was, I think, an 86. So pretty neat to see those trucks still in action. They've had a lot of money put into them, and they're still on the road and looking great today. As mentioned, the 4020 works great to load with. We can usually load a semi with 36 bales in about 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, if it takes us a little while, we get to scoop bales around, which is what you're seeing here right now. Uh, it takes us 45 minutes, time everything's strapped down. But... Very quick, very easy to load. Round bales on a step deck, they're a disaster. They take about a million straps, and they just don't ship out like a, a, a square does. Plus, a square is legal with. You don't have to worry about signs or overage sizes. Our hay's been in pretty good condition because it was a super nice winter. We haven't had the sales for it that we typically would, so now it's what we're carrying over is going to auction. The auction's been bringing a decent price. A uh, couple loads when I thought a little light, but... Generally, it hasn't been too bad for this time of year for uh, 2019 harvest uh, crops. But uh, our hay tarps got tore up in some 70 mile hour winds we had from storms this spring, so it's just time to go. And there was a few bales where those hay tarps got tore up that were just rotten, which is what you're seeing right there. I ended up just actually hauling them off to a um, brush pile, and we're just going to burn it in the brush uh, together and just get the hay piles cleaned up, and we'll be worrying about 2020 crop here soon enough. Well, what you guys saw there was actually some very saturated fields from the amount of rain we've had over this Memorial Day weekend, and we've got more rain in the forecast coming. It's just been very gray, cloudy, cool weather, and pretty damp. Uh, even though we're below on rainfall total, we've been damp. We don't get much rain, but when we do get a rain, it's cool and it's misty, and it never dries out, and it stays here for weeks on end. So the soil temp's low, and the growing degree units are, are short. Crop looks fantastic. The corn's got a beautiful stand to it, but uh, we need some heat and we need some sunlight. As for the rest of this video, I've mentioned it before, but YouTube's a hard thing to balance. So for the rest of this video, if you don't like the rants or where I get into some talk about politics, now's your time to click off. 
If you're a farmer, you've probably heard of the CFAP payments, which are nothing more than coronavirus stimulus packages for farmers. And in my opinion, they're nothing more than a big joke. For starters here, I'm going to show two prices. This is at the exact same elevator. One of these was the prices on January 15th, and one of these was the prices uh, just last Friday here at the close. I'm going to link some of these articles in the description when I do this video, but there's multiple articles on the internet that came out the other day about this CFAP payment, which is what you'll be getting for a direct countercyclical payment to offset your losses of the coronavirus. Several of these articles actually suggest that the government is trying to pick up the tab, so to speak, on about half of your losses. So it was the government that decided to shut things down, yet I'm required to pick up the other half tab. That kind of irritates me in a nutshell right there. But as you read through how these things work, and by that I mean what you're going to get per bushel, you're not going to get half your losses covered. You'd be lucky to get 10% of your losses covered. Now here's another link directly off the USDA's website, uh, farmers.gov slash CFAP, and then again I'll link that in the description, but this pretty much tells you how it's going to get broke down, and here I have highlighted exactly how that works, and then you choose your rates. So if you use this formula here, what I did, some simple math here, and I used corn, 100,000 bushels raised, just if you're a farm that raised 100,000 bushels, say you hadn't sold 60,000, well, I figured using those two pictures between January 15th and, and that was selling on the 5-1 contract date, well, the difference was 83 cents a bushel. So you technically lost about $49,800 if you didn't sell it from then till now's date. Now, if you use this CFAP thing off that website I just showed here, uh, here's how the math breaks down. Here's what they're going to pay. It'd be about $16,750. Well, I don't think 16750 is anywhere near the losses of the 49.8 that you actually occurred. Not to mention there's multiple things in here, uh, such as hay and everything else, that they shut the auctions down completely. That's why our hay is going out late. Couldn't even sell the stuff. Um, that's not covered by anything. So a lot of things are not covered and we're getting screwed. And there's just countless information in here about... Uh, removing the caps for large farmers. So does it really help the small farmer? Of course, even a dollar helps, but does it replenish what we would have had before? No, it doesn't. And when that market started to crash, it went down and went down fast. Uh, that corn went from about 383, I think it jumped up to 386. It ended up kind of quivering around for a little bit, and the week it crashed, it literally went to about 320, then to I can't even sell it you know, contract only corn for a couple of weeks, and it finally lingered back in the upper 290s or around three bucks, which is where it is now. And it's just kind of staying there. I'll get into it more on in future videos, but there is just a lot of people that are going to uh, be very, very hurt from this coronavirus deal. I had a lawyer I was talking to the other day, and he was just joking about maybe I should get into uh, bankruptcy work, he said. Uh, pretty sad, because I think a lot of people are way behind on their bills. Now you got almost 40 million Americans that are out of work. Uh, things aren't good. Uh, the economy is slipping into a borderline depression. And amidst it all, you can clearly read article after article. This is a different one about it. ethanol, but the general census is they're all for the corporations and for helping large business, you know. So even during a pandemic and borderline uh, depression, you know, our lovely garment we have uh, is business as usual. And as a farmer, we continue to get screwed. As a quick disclaimer here before I conclude this video, there's a lot more that went into this coronavirus pandemic than what I put in this little bit of a clip of video. Uh, a lot more aspects went into the price decline of corn, such as China and Russia dumping oil in the markets at the same time. Those are all topics for future videos coming up. So don't get too wild with the comments.